Perse, please welcome Anton Hofflin. Hey, Henry. Anton. Good, Good to, to see, see you. you. How's it going? It's going very well. I'm very happy with the conference, and I'm very happy with the way it's generally going with 2024 stack. How are you feeling about uh, Realcom this year? What's so exciting about it? Um, the buzz at Realcom is beyond belief this year. I mean, I was in Orlando last year, and yeah. it was very enjoyable, and, but it was nothing like this. No. Realcom this year actually really surpasses all my expectations. It's yeah, really the energy is insane. Why do you think that is? I think we're getting to this inflection point with the intelligent buildings and people actually finally getting the interest into optimizing uh, what they've got and actually taking advantage of all the data that's available and actually reducing their running costs and uh, optimizing their operations and actually delivering better services that people want. Yep. It seems like years of profitalizing, trying to get people to see that this yeah. is the future, combined with enough technology that can show them that actually it is showing a bottom line difference, has gotten everyone interested in adopting right. it. So what are we going to talk about today? What is your area of interest today? You always have something interesting that you bring. Well, one of the things that keeps popping up in just about every session I've been to is the issue of cybersecurity. Yes. And um, cybersecurity is starting to pose more and more challenges. So this, uh, you know, later today we have a uh, session on securing the mobile enterprise. A year ago, that would have been a session that you know we could have maybe thought of, but wouldn't have happened. I mean, the the, the flame virus and the Stuxnet virus. I mean, never yeah. has there been any <laughs> indication that whether it's this phone or this computer, I am not. 100% secure anymore. So what are we going to do? Well, we have to do um, an, a number of things. And first of all, let's just look at the main challenges that face the organizations these days. Uh, on the one hand, we have bring your own device or bring your own Android or bring your own Apple, whatever you want to call it. Um, and that is actually a trend that has been uh, in the making for the last 30 years when uh, you know, in the 70s, people start bringing their own floppy disks. In the 80s, you got the first laptops. In the 90s, you got the first USB sticks. And now, the problem is in your face with the uh, with the iPads and the iPods, uh, where you actually have to control the data. As an enterprise, you have to make sure that the data is in places where you expect it to be and nowhere else. Mm. Then the second thing that is specific to the real estate industry is the weakness of the building management and many other systems that get installed in buildings today. And uh, that is a real issue. There has never been a um, systematic approach to designing uh, the implementation of these systems, how they're interconnected, what network they use, and how they connect to the outside world. And you will very often find, for instance, a building system um, uh, installer will come back to you and say, look, I need to have this DSL link to just connect out, and I have to be able to support my systems remotely, and so on and you've got your back door, basically. Mm -hmm. So that, that's Even a these big, computers, big problem. I mean, we're online, but who's network, right? Right, no idea. Right. And None. I don't think I want to know. No, and, I, and when I have to sign into my Twitter and to our Google documents here, who's, who's to say who's mining that kind of detail? Well, there are technologies out there that people can use to, um, to actually make sure that you're communicating with the computer you think you're com communicating with. Um, more and more, we see the uptake of things like PKI infrastructures. And um, these are infrastructures to actually make sure that you can identify uh, the other party securely. And um, we have done a lot of work in 2024 side to actually um, make sure that we have a secure environment. So that when I communicate with my computers, where I actually do really not want to share uh, the information with anyone else in the internet, that I know that the computer that is communicating with my servers is actually one of my computers. That can be done with the PKI uh, infrastructure and certificates and all these things, but it is still very complex technology. This is really still very geeky, right? Yeah. What enterprises need to do, in my opinion, right now, and especially in the light of the changing legislation in the US, and there's some legislation coming up that is actually, if, in my view, quite scary, um, but necessary. Um, is the, and that is a legislation that's going to, uh, through the Senate right now, which is sponsored, and uh, you know, the, the bill is sponsored by Joe Lieberman. And it basically specifies what needs to be done uh, with critical infrastructure to the US um, and uh, how you need to secure that critical infrastructure. And the timeline on the implementation of this thing is short. And I mean really short. 
What do you mean by that? The, the, it's the a year, year and a half. That it would take to implement it, or that no, we have in, that if we want to get this My in view under the is wire. that it, it will be implemented in stages. The U.S. government will start identifying the infrastructure that is critical to them. Um, and, you know, that includes all federal buildings or buildings that are owned by third parties but that have federal uh, um, agencies in them. It could be utilities, it could be anything, right? It gets designated as critical. Um, and at that point, the owner of that building, at his expense, needs to make sure that he does a risk assessment, he uh, identifies the weaknesses and remediates them. What kinds of uh, steps are we talking about here? Uh, the first step is um, to actually uh, uh, hire an independent auditor uh, to make sure that you have a good idea of where your weaknesses are. And I would suggest that people don't wait with doing that. They should go and do this right now. And we were in a session yesterday where this came up. Um, this is something that is going to be pushed through. This is not going to be put on hold uh, despite the elections. It is something wanted by the cyber authorities in, in, in the US, including the NSA. This is, this is going to happen. What part does 2020 foresight play in all of this? Um, we have um, a approach to uh, doing security, both on the enterprise side of things, uh, as well as the real estate side of things, that actually allows you to harden your networks and make sure that um, even if there are so-called backdoors in systems, um, uh, it does not get out. You control it, you're in charge of the infrastructure, and you know exactly what happens on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, what you need to do, and we would be very glad to, to assist people with this, um, what, what needs to be done is you need to develop a couple of, uh, uh, or implement a couple of changes to your infrastructure, you need to start thinking differently about your data. You need to go and classify it. You need to possibly implement completely uh, different organizational structures for IT and, and operational technology. And you may even have to implement, depending on how critical you are, an independent so-called security operations center that reports directly to uh, the CEO of an organization. It's, and uh, yeah, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. It just sounds so... Uh I don't even want to say what it sounds like because it's not <laughs> proper for broadcast, but it sounds a bit ponderous. Uh, it's uh, to deal it can with be, but if security is done properly, um, in my view, security is actually an enabler. Uh, it can make your life very much more easy. If you do proper security, uh, you very often get single sign on as a benefit. Right. Uh, you know, it, it can help you with the roles and responsibilities of the organization, and ultimately, I think it will um, help you reduce uh, risk both to yourself, your company, and, and the country at large. If this does become legislation, then in order to be audited, for, to, to get an audit done, those auditors will need to be approved by the government. They need to have a certain qualification. Will 2020 Foresight have that type of qualification? We already partly qualified in that area. Um, 2020 Foresight is a European organization. Yes. Uh, and I have personally got the, uh, the UK equivalent qualifications that allow me to do these kinds of audits. Wonderful. Uh, other than that, you know, uh, prior to hiring a cybersecurity firm like yours or another, what are some of the more basic things we can do to shore up our own cybersecurity, even if it's just one quick tip? Go and have a look at the way in which your network is put together and make sure that you harden it as much as possible. That what? That you harden it as much as possible. That means that you implement segregation between, between systems and you also look at your data and you uh, identify what data is absolutely essential and critical to the operation and you make sure that that is contained within a hardened environment and everything else is not. So in my view, Something like uh, your enterprise access network, which is where people normally work and, uh, and live, is an insecure environment. Right? That is a completely different view on the way you do enterprise networking than from what's customary today. Uh, but I actually think that with bring your own device, uh, the IT departments have actually lost the battle for security in the enterprise access uh, world. They really need to retrench uh, and uh, build up strong internally segregated and strengthened uh, environments and accept that the enterprise access world is actually just as insecure as the internet itself. And that basically means that you have to do things like remote um, um, operations of your app, VDI, um, possibly application um, gateways like VPN style gateways 
but in my view it also means that you can no longer use the way people have been doing today. Uh, you can no longer use traditional VPNs to actually secure your network. That, that mechanism uh, is no longer really sufficient to achieve the security you need to achieve. This is really groundbreaking stuff, Anton. I, I, I really want to thank you for coming on. It's I know pleasure. we'll be hearing an awful lot about this. Uh, and if you are interested in making your company secure, uh, I mean, I think just in this last week, the, the news that has broke that yeah. so many computers are already infected with a, a virus that not only can use your camera and, and then go out to your Bluetooth devices yeah. Yeah. and turn those into spies, you, you, we don't have the luxury of the, waiting anymore. Exactly. So if you're interested, uh, 2024 and then the word S-I-G-H-T is your website. That is my website, website. yes. And uh, I, I know from working with you in the past that you're very accessible to talk about with these things. We just cannot wait on cybersecurity. Anton, thank you so much for being with us Thank today. you very much. It was a pleasure. Wonderful.